Hello and uh, welcome to the our site on Installatron and site templates. Our did I say site? Our session on Installatron and site templates. I'm here with Amanda. Hi, Amanda. Hello, and my cat Ollie is also joining us today. Yeah, he, he insisted. You know, he did. Um, yeah. He's very passionate about domain of one's own administration. Um, that's mm -hmm. what we love about him. Mm -hmm. um, so. Uh, yeah, we're, this is a quick session, um, but we really just kind of wanted to go through two main pieces of capability that you have access to in WHM in Installatron specifically. Um, we're highlighting them because I think they're really handy to reminders. If you're not using these things, uh, you might have a use for them. They're, 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 uh, super handy. Um, and, and, um, yeah, I just think it, that it could benefit a lot of admin workflows potentially. Really two things, we're going to talk about Installatron's overview, which shows you every application on the server that Installatron knows about and sort of what you can do there. You can search, you can clone sites, you can move sites around. Um, and then we're going to talk about templating and what you can do with templates. We'll, we'll make a quick WordPress template and talk about how to manage templates and what they look like and stuff like that. So. Um, Amanda, you kind of want to get us um, kicked off here with um, sort of the Installatron tools in general? Yeah. Yeah. So I think that, you know, what's great about this is that it you can both understand how to navigate WHM a little bit more confidently, as well as uh, realize that Installatron is actually pretty helpful sometimes, and it's not always a pain in the butt. Um, so in order to get started with what we're going to talk about, we're going to need to navigate to Installatron, which is located uh, on the server in WHM. So uh, Taylor is hovering right over that search bar. And the easiest way to do it is just to start typing Installatron. And then it's under that plugins category, Installatron's applications installer. And this is your main dashboard. And so you've got a few things at the top that are really helpful to see just right off the bat, like how many applications are on your server total, uh, how many backups there are. And um, you can also see things like the Installatron version and licensing and stuff like that. Um, so the first thing that we want to do today is learn a little bit about how to move uh, applications around to different accounts. So if we go to the My Applications tab, and uh, let's just, uh, let's search for something. Taylor, do you have something? Yeah, I have a couple things on here, I believe. Okay, I have one thing on here. Um, okay. <laughs> so, but here, here's a WordPress site that I've uh, made for, we'll, we'll take a template of it later, but we can use it for this too, so. Yeah, so would you say uh, would be a good uh, use case for, for this just just in, as an example about for what we're about to do sure well a couple things i mean before we even do anything i just wanted to mention you know you already said it but this is a full list of all of the applications installatron knows about so you can search here and when what you're searching when you search here is this title field and in stuff in the url basically um doesn't have to be a complete url which is super handy so as you notice i just put my own name in there and that came up with this here because it's in the subdomain that I have on stateu.org. Yeah. Um, so that can be really handy right off the bat. Um, but uh, there's a couple things here. So you can you can go to the view edit details screen just like you can in cPanel. Um, you can template, which we'll talk later. Uh, you could do a backup from here, um, but clone is super handy. Um, and you may be familiar with cloning on inside a cPanel where it will tell you, hey, you know, you can make a copy of this site to any of the subdomains or domains you have access to. Um, but we can do that here as well. Yeah. So if we go ahead and click on that button, say we want to um, clone Taylor's WordPress site to um, a site uh, to, to a domain that's associated with a different account. And so the way that we would do that is by going to that domain field and instead of just seeing all of the domains that are associated with the one account that you're working in, because we're working from the server level, we can see every domain in the server, 
which is really handy, but also a lot. So instead of having to scroll through something that some people may not realize is that this field is also a search field. So you can go ahead and just type in the domain that you wanted to be assigned to. Um, yeah, and I'm uh, for for the purposes of this, let's say we're going to move it to our documentation. Yeah. Um, so I could just start typing document and it will start auto, uh, not auto completing, but it'll start narrowing down the list. So. Yeah, and then it'll, yeah, just fix that. And then my least favorite, yeah, <laughs> is to figure out this directory thing. Um, normally, I think when working with this, you want to kind of ignore that. Um, but in this case, because we have something existing there, we will want a directory, so clone test. Um, and then you would just scroll down and, you know, unless you have specific specifications that you need here, you can just go ahead and press that clone button. Yeah, it is, it is worth mentioning here. Um, I usually end up changing this after the fact. Um, typically this is when I hit clone, but I think technically if I hit let me manage these settings, you could go in here and change the email address. That's the default WordPress, uh, admin account. Mm -hmm. So if you say, say I'm cloning my thing here on my account over to, let's say Amanda's account. Um, I could go in and put Amanda's email in here. Um, I honestly end up just doing that after the fact usually. Um, but technically you, you could do it from here as well. So. Awesome. So it's really so, handy to have this all in one place as opposed to having to like switch between accounts and, you know, move things more manually, um, you can really take advantage of this dashboard. Yeah, and so if you, you know, look on this dashboard here, you can see that the applications have gone up by one. Um, and if you go into the task manager, as Taylor just has, you can see the whole process as it is working. Yeah, and I should have mentioned here, I, I kind of got ahead of you, but um, when you're when there's something happening on my applications it'll say open task manager and you can do that here but you can also go back to this main installatron page and go to active tasks it's the same thing basically so either either way so yeah now it's over on documentation.stateu.org slash clone dash test um and it's the same as what was the url of my old one So exact same thing, except I'm logged into this one, but you know, otherwise the yeah. same thing. So super handy. Um, just cloning, you know, we, we real common thing is we have uh, someone ask like, hey, a student made this and a faculty wants to keep it or or sort of maintain it because it's for maybe a, an organization or something. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, while you could have the student's whole cPanel account be sort of uh, moved in and, and that's that's something we talked about doing of ha how the idea of C panels managed by more than one person or mm -hmm. more in person managing more than one C panel. That's great. But if you're only talking about a single website or a single application, this is a really easy way to move things between accounts. So totally. Um, cool. So that's the first thing. Uh, just note that this this search interface, super handy. I use this when I was an admin all the time um, as to get an overview of sort of what's been happening and what's been created on the server even. Sometimes I would just look at this. Yeah. <laughs> so um, the other really great thing you can do from here is you can template stuff. So um, I'm actually going to delete our documentation clone we just made here because I'm definitely going to forget about this site if I don't. Uh, whoops. Um, but, uh, and I guess worth pointing out, you can uninstall things from here as well. Um, so uh, I made a WordPress site in my StateU account, um, and this is uh, just a real bare bones WordPress quick start. This is uh, just a WordPress site. All I did is install WordPress. I uh, installed a single theme. Uh, I installed the Go theme in this case. Um, and I'm going to kind of dismiss any uh, weird uh, messages. And I didn't install any plugins in this case. I did go ahead and change a uh, post title and a page title. Um, I made this is a page and this is a post. And then I also added it to the menu, the page, to the menu. So. 
Um, let's say you made a template like this and it had some sort of self-descriptive, self-guiding text mm -hmm. for someone who's maybe new to WordPress. Um, and maybe you're picking a theme that you think is a little bit more beginner friendly. Um, I happen to think the Go theme is pretty pretty beginner, beginner friendly. Um, and this, we're gonna make this into a template. So basically that this can be an option that someone who's installing WordPress can uh, make a site exactly like this one and start from this point. Um, templates can be used for all kinds of things. It could be used for a quick start like this. Maybe you've got, I've seen people who make templates that include uh, a lot of stuff, like a bunch of recommended plugins and maybe several themes. Um, potentially, that could that could be a way to go. Or I've seen people make sort of specific templates for, hey, this is a template for if you're in English 301 and we're going to be starting with uh, a writing portfolio and here's a way to get started, basically. So you could, you could do a more specific template like that. Um, templates are not just for WordPress, but we see them used most often for WordPress. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, to make a template, you need to start First, have a site that you're going to template, and that part I've already done. And then we go back into Installatron here, and I can go to my uh, back to my applications, and I'm going to search for it. So um, I'll just search for my name again, and here's that same entry. Um, and I can just click this little star button called Template, give it a title. Let's call it WordPress Quick Start. And I can do a description. So a basic starting place for WordPress using the Go theme. Um, and I can hit template. And this will take you know a few seconds for it to essentially make its own copy into its storage on the server for the template. And then it will show up um, available for for folks to use. So we'll um, look at what that looks like here. If I go into my um, state U C panel and go try to install WordPress, um, yeah, let's say I want to put it right at this main, my main domain here. There's all these templates down here, including this one I just made, WordPress Quick Start. So give me a clean WordPress install, I'll add my own content. This is the default one. This is what's going to be selected by default. Now, if your domain of one's own has no templates on it right now, I think this content section won't even show up, basically. Right. But as soon as you have a template that's not just this clean install one, um, you'll have this list here. So uh, you can see I made a template demoing how to uh, do this before. We, we've used this a few different times for different things, but the one I just made, WordPress Quick Start, is right here. Um, it's the, the cool thing about these templates is that even if I pick one, like I know for a fact the True Writer one I made months ago um, that wasn't on WordPress 6.1.1, it still will install the latest version of WordPress, which is really mm -hmm. cool. Um, it will install the latest version of WordPress and whatever plugins and themes that you had in posts and pages that you had. So um, the nice thing is you don't have to make a new one for every WordPress version. You do still want to check it out and test it maybe once or twice a year. I would, I would say honestly once a year is enough for a simple one. Um, just to make sure that the plugins and themes that you've selected are still maintained and updated and and uh, compatible. Um, so, uh, but I'll use this one I just made, um, and you get all the same options from there. You get to pick a username, email, password, all that kind of stuff, um, and uh, install it. And we'll give it a quick install here. One thing I definitely need to do for these recordings is have some kind of like soundboard for installing loading music. I think yeah. that would really bring up the the production quality. I also need to fix my light bulb back there. It's blinking. I'm noticing it even <laughs> in my preview and it's annoying. <laughs> um, okay, so it's almost done. And obviously the larger the template, the longer it's gonna take, right? So if you have yeah. 15 plugins, 
maybe that's that's a <laughs> that, that might be a lot to maintain but but yep. depending on what you're trying to do that may not be that that crazy um it will take a little bit longer but you know usually it's not going to take much longer than a normal wordpress install so i can go here and there we go i've got a template the only i've got a copy basically of the site the only difference is it's inserted my name you know i i went with the default my blog whereas my template was called wordpress quick start Mm -hmm. um, and other than that, it's pretty much the same thing. Um, so as far as managing these, so if I go back to WHM here in Installatron, um, there's a couple things I can do. So I can go look at the templates under applications in the sidebar here. And this is where all the templates live, um, for Installatron. And as you can see, they're not all WordPress. No. Um, well, I mean, all the ones we've made are WordPress, but you can make templates for any of these applications in this list. So uh, you can make a Nomeka template. It's not something I've done, but you can do. And I could I could see that being handy, especially given that Omeka has a little bit of a learning curve if you've never used it. So, mm -hmm. um, But the, it does support other things. I haven't used most of these other applications other than Omeka and WordPress. Um, Joomla, that's one. <laughs> um, but most of these are pretty obscure, to be honest, um, other than WordPress and Omeka. Um, so these here um, will control whether they're visible or not. So if you want to keep a template around, but you don't want it to be visible for your users, and you don't want to delete it, because maybe you want to use it another time and enable it quick, um, you can just hide these by unchecking all of these here. So um, I might do that with all of these for now, you know? Um, and maybe I keep my WordPress quick start um, and I can just hit save and those are still around. They're just not going to be shown when, uh, whoops, when folks uh, try to install WordPress. So if I try to make another WordPress site here on my cPanel, the content field only has two options now. Yeah. Um, you also can, of course, delete one. So let me go here. I'll delete my multi-site test one that I made. Now it's gone from the server, so not only can't it, it, it's not coming back, right? Yeah, yep. there's no backups for the templates um, to keep that in mind too, because, well, yeah, it's they're not stored in the same way as normal sites, basically. Um, the only thing you can change after a template has been made is really the name. So if you need to go and um, update your template, and maybe you've got another thing you want to add or something like that. The method is just install a site using your template, make whatever changes you want, and then re-template it, basically. And mm -hmm. you can delete the old one and rename the new one to be the same name as the old one, basically. You're replacing it, and that's how you do it. Um, the other thing I can keep in mind, too, is this star. This is going to be the default option. So technically, you could make, say, WordPress Quick Start the default experience when someone installs WordPress, right? Um, I would want to, personally, you want to think real carefully about that because I think there is some value, even though sometimes it, the, learning WordPress is a thing, I think there is some value for folks to kind of learn from scratch, like, oh yeah, this is what I get out of the box on a new WordPress site, and these are some changes I want to make. But, you know, that might not be aligned with what your users need and, and what you, you all can support or need to do. You may want to go, no, we really need to pick, a, say, a different theme or have some default content in there for folks um, by, you know, right out of the gate. And you can, uh, you can do that. If I hit this uh, WordPress quick start, this little button there and hit save, now if I try to install WordPress, let me refresh this page. my quick start will actually be the default option. So, But, you know, unless you hid the um, the basic WordPress, that's yeah. also still an option. It won't auto fill that one. Totally, um, totally. Yeah. yeah, I think if you did something, say like mine here, where I really only made, like I installed a theme and made some very minor changes, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I would just be a little bit leery about like, I've, you know, if you're installing like a bunch of plugins just so people know about them, but maybe they're deactivated, it's actually kind of a lot of junk to be installing. Mm -hmm. um, 
and may actually have like impacts on storage on the server because keep in mind then every time someone installs your template that's it's installing those say 10 plugins whether they're using those plugins or not so right. there's a trade off but um and, and it obviously very reversible, right? Like if you're like, oh, we don't want to do that anymore. Well, then you would just change that. So I can change it right back here. Um, go empty content again. And now empty content or that give me a clean install is the default again. So yeah, templates are super handy. I think a lot of folks could benefit from using them. I, I personally would, um, if I was in the admin shoes at the moment at a domain of one's own school, I would be trying to develop maybe a few templates that highlight use cases and what, what could be possible with WordPress. Like here's a podcasting template and here's mm -hmm. a course blogging template, stuff like that. So it's a really cool feature um, that I think folks could benefit from. Yeah. Anything else before we wrap up this uh, short session, Amanda? No, I think we covered it. Cool. See you all next session. See ya.